I have the plastic sword. Has there ever been a more manly man, the man's man, He-Man? How you guys doing today? I'm Frank, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be making the power sword from He-Man. Now this is a pretty iconic sword, but it's really not that complicated. Pretty easy to 3D print. I'm gonna take you guys through the whole process. Now these files are from Nico Industries. There's a link for them down below, so make sure you guys go check out his website. And thank you again, Nico, for sponsoring this video. The sword is pretty fun to make. Now, even though the sword is kind of big, it can be 3D printed on almost any machine. And I'll talk about cutting up the files later and reference you guys to a good video that can help you out with that. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, you wanna see something, know something, say something, please leave a comment down below. I read them all and I do my best to respond to them, so don't be afraid to ask. But enough about that. Let's get started. So here we are, we have the sword printed here, but before we talk about that, I do wanna say a special thank you to Printbed as well for supplying me with the filament for this project. This isn't really a sponsorship. They've just been really hooking me up lately and their filament's been absolutely great. I printed the sword in six pieces because that's what my printers at the time could handle. All I had was the SVO3s. Nico does include the full sword uncut, so you can slice this up however you guys want. I have a very good tutorial for that. I'll link that down below and right here in the corner so you guys can go check that out. And it shows you how to cut up really large swords and props to fit them on any printer. Now again, I could made these cuts specifically where I wanted. I made it as close to this little hilt as possible so I could stand it up just like that in one piece. I was able to cut the handle off and I put a metal rod for well a hole for the metal rod which we'll talk about in a minute and then this is a cap that's going to get glued onto the end i'm also going to be doing two new things in this video first i'm going to just use super glue to fuse the seams together because i don't really need too much strength since i have the metal rod and the other thing i'm going to be doing that's new that i've never done before on pla or plastic prints is using resin to fill the gaps now normally i would use something like wood filler over here which is super cheap but i want this to cure even quicker and i'm going to try to use a little bit of leftover resin for my resin printers and cure it by pouring it on the seam and it should sand down very very easy and cure basically instantly so let's give that a shot i'm going to get the sword together i'm going to glue the seams and uh, we'll get to work because i'm still using mesh mixer and i cut a 0.8 millimeter channel in this but now i'm back in america i don't have access to metric rods anymore at lowe's these are all standard size it's actually too small for this channel i'm going to use a little bit of electrical tape or duct tape and wrap it around the metal rod to friction fit it in there better. It's just for strength. It's not really so much for threading it in. I'm all for PLA welding, but if you're gonna be using super glue, or in this case, two-part cyanoacrylate glue, sand the edges. The more abrasions you can make on it, the more surface area the glue will have to bond. It's not a game, it's a red sword is glued together look at this thing this is a this is a this is a good size not bad it feels pretty sturdy and i just glued it together in summation i just put the metal rod in there use the electrical tape or the duct tape to give it a little bit more um, size so i was able to slide the parts over it their friction fit i put glue all up and down the channel so the rod's not going to slide um, around everything lined up perfectly i love it and then I filled the very bottom of it. There was a little bit of gap left from where I cut the metal rod. Obviously I had to cut the excess off. And I just filled the rest with super glue, insecured it with the uh, activator and just put the cap on. Next up is sanding this baby. 
and getting it painted. Let's get started. All sanded, ready to go. Now I'm gonna hit it with a coat of primer first before I actually start trying to fill these seams because I might have to use a lot less than I think. So I'm gonna go douse this with probably, you know what, I think we're gonna use filler primer. It might take a little bit longer to dry, but it's a nice flat kind of blade with not a lot of detail. So filler primer really won't hurt us this time. So let's get the paint. Okay, so we have the sword primed and ready to go. I can clearly see where the gaps are that I need to fill. So let's get started. Originally, I was gonna put a little bit of resin in there, cure it, and then sand it down. However, it isn't bonding well to the PLA. I just wanted to try it. It didn't work too well. What is working well is cyanoacrylate. You pour the super glue in there, and it's pretty much standard glue, but this is an activator that cures it instantly. So what I was doing is dripping it along the seam and spraying it immediately. Now that it's set and cured, it is a little high, so you can, you can kind of hear it scraping. Well, you probably can't hear it. I can hear it. So it's a little bit high, and I'm going to take the razor and just scrape it off and smooth it down before I get to the sandpaper and just knock off those really high edges and then hit it with some 60 or 80 grit and just cut it down the rest of the way. Okay, that's it for sanding and filling. We're all ready to go and get some gloss black on this. Here's the blade painted gloss black. There are a few little seam lines still poking through, but it's a sword, so maybe some uh, weathering and battle damage can kind of help cover that and hide that and make it look not as um, unintentional. We're gonna go ahead and hit it with some graphite rub. I'm using just standard Creta Color, I, Belleville, uh, Breville, whatever this is. This is the graphite rub I'm using. I also made the mistake of completely forgetting to get leather handle wrap. So I'm gonna try a little bit of brown paint and just see if I can get it dirty enough and wear it down enough um, on the handle to make it look like leather. I probably am gonna go back at some point and do a better brown paint. The camera really doesn't pick it up good, but with the reflection of the light, I'm actually kind of impressed with how it came out. And I used the graphite rub to kind of get rid of the tackiness almost immediately by just, you know, I mean, it's on my fingers, you can see it. But this is from me touching the blade while I was graphite rubbing it. As long as you wipe it off and buff it in there, the graphite rub itself is all dried on the blade. It sure is crazy what just a little bit of chaos and damage can do to make a prop just look more real. You can spend as much time as you want on the blade. I could have put more love into sanding it just a little or experimented more with uh, different gloss blacks, but I'm pretty happy with it. This is a really big beefy blade and the area especially above and below the handle I'm particularly fond of. I think that metal shine just looks great. That just about does it for this video, guys. Uh, this is a really, really straightforward build. The blade is pretty much all one color, and you, like I said, you can kind of do whatever you want with the handle, wrap it in leather or paint it. And one last huge thank you to Nico Industries for sponsoring this video. Links for all that stuff down below, and there will be more videos from his website coming out. He's releasing a lot of cool STL files, and it stays pretty current with all the pop culture stuff. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the tutorials and videos that I put out. That just about does it for this one, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, and you have a good day. Thank you.